In South Africa, the standard of education is not unlike it was 20 years ago. Schools are underfunded and understaffed. Infrastructure is at breaking point, and for the majority of school leavers, tertiary study is a distant dream. So where will our future leaders come from? How can they lead us into a new, opportunity-rich South Africa, when 60% of schools in the Western Cape don't even have a library? One woman who's dedicated her life to creating educational opportunities and future leaders is Lee Maynard. A 33-year-old from Cape Town, who's known from an early age what her life's work would be. Welcome. She's the co-founder of Tsiba, a school of business administration, leadership and entrepreneurship. There's such a beautiful vibe here. That for me is a sign of success. You know, that's the learning environment I always dreamt of creating and now it's real. We look for people we're inspired by, that they would probably, being who they are, succeed without us. They just have that drive and energy. But through the networks, the knowledge, the resources, we can fast track them on their journey of leadership. Pay it forward, heroes. Pay it forward is, is central to the philosophy here. So our students all get full tuition scholarships and we say to them, you don't need to pay us back at all. We've chosen you because you're a leader. And all that we expect of you is to pay it forward. So if you've gained skills, knowledge, expertise, go, go share that with other people. Go, go be a leader in the world. Founded in 2004 with a vision to ignite opportunity, Ziba has already awarded more than a thousand scholarships to future leaders and entrepreneurs. So what were you like as a child? I was incredibly serious. Uh, serious and probably overachieving. Always putting on productions and plays and um, playing games where I was teaching all the other kids. Um, okay, thank you. I'm the eldest of, of four children and I was definitely the bossy older sister. There was no doubt about that. You know, my earliest memory actually was, was meeting my grandmother's spiritual master. He was a beautiful Sikh man and he, he was visiting this country from, from India. And I, I desperately wanted to see this man. And, and my first memory was actually of him looking at me in, in my eyes with such a look of love. And, and in that moment, I, I guess it felt like my soul woke up. I was suddenly here, present on this planet, yeah. And you were very lucky to have that because you connected with that very strongly from a young age. I grew up believing that we are souls who are reincarnated here and, and so I was always trying to find out, well, why am I here and, and what's it all about? So I, I wasn't your ordinary child. So from an early age I loved reading. Just, it, it opened up a world and, 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 and provided me with the answers that I was always looking for. Hello. Lisa, here you are. Hi, Welcome. You? Lovely, to, Lovely meet you. to have you here at last. Come on in. Oh, this is gorgeous. Yes, so this is my proud mommy collection. <laughs> I'm delighted to be, uh, be the audience. What was she like as a baby? Headstrong and determined from the minute she arrived. I don't think she enjoyed being a baby. Too much she, waste, waste of time. Yes, it was a complete waste of time. She was always like this, lurching forward <laughs> to the next stage. Lee's first words that she strung together, I do it myself. Another time when I should have seen it coming, but I didn't. <laughs> She was so um, responsible and, and together and composed. She didn't want to be young and silly and irresponsible. She wanted to get where she was going. By the time she was 12, Lee had put so much pressure on herself that she developed chronic fatigue syndrome. This deeply spiritual child who wanted to change the world was bedridden for almost a year. What was your experience of the time that Lee was ill? Why is my child permanently exhausted? Why can't she open her eyes? I and mean, sometimes I literally had to feed her. She was too tired to eat. And it just seemed to get worse. After Lee had been out of school for a long time, and she knew that there was no time set on her having to go back and conform, 
she was able to ease into being more of the person that she wanted to become. One of the things that I was trying to change in my life was to move out of the very privileged space that, that, that I had almost been cocooned in. I had I'd gone to a very privileged elite school. And so when I returned to school, I, I chose to go to the local formal model C school. And for someone who's always been searching, questing, I, I, had, I had a wider world to search in. It was the early 90s when I was in my teens and it was a very, very exciting time to be young in South Africa. It's like you felt this great responsibility from an early age of what would happen and what your part would be in it. The way I, I made sense of it was that I was born in South Africa in this time to be a part of this, this, this next generation, the generation that comes after Mandela and Tutus. And, and sees these changes through. And I would share this message really with whoever would listen. How old were you at the time? 14, 15. And my experience as a young South African was that we were very separated and, and very divided from each other. So I became passionate about this concept of saying to fellow South Africans, come, we've got to start talking. You know, we're going to be in you know, important places one day. So let's get to know each other. Since as I went around, I started collecting young, other youth with vision. And eventually that led to me deciding to hold a workshop where I would gather all of us. These were the youth with vision years now, 1995. Oh, that's these ones. Look yeah. at all these people that you pulled together. Yeah, a whole lot of new friends. And there's Joshua. So we must have been 15, 16 at the time. And, and you go back a long way. Yeah, we did, more than half our lives now. I was conscious of the fact that we needed liberation within our country. And one has to be honest, I think things were still a bit sensitive post our first democratic election. Our youth coming together at, at that specific stage was nice in the sense, you know, we could, we could discuss, we could engage with each other. Lee's desire was for everyone just to share but most importantly, I think it was for everyone to grow together in our diversity. So for me, that, that in itself was the success of the camp, that we could really look past our differences and look to the future and realize, you know what, that the future of South Africa was practically in our hands. It's for us to trailblaze and to make a difference. <laughs>